joining. I can still see some numbers trickling in, so that's great news. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Lizzie. Good to see you both. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Wonderful. I think it is time we can uh, get the ball rolling for today. So um, we're delighted to kick off the first 2023 webinar uh, with the wonderful Lizzie and Wendy today. We'll be talking about all things collaboration. Um, as I said, I'm your host, Amy from Breathe. Uh, what we want to get to grips with today is really what uh, SMEs are experiencing in the current climate. Um, so we definitely want to talk about top tips and practical solutions that are going to help you today and all things that you'll be able to take away with you. Um, the session will run for about 45 minutes. We've also got uh, a QA and a at the end of this session. It's going to be a bit longer than usual. So please do think of any question you, questions that you have. Um, the Q&A box is just at the bottom. So whenever you think of something, do just, do just pop it in and we'll get to it um, towards the end of the webinar. And um, just to let you know as well, this webinar is being recorded. So if you do need to leave early for any reason, you'll be able to catch this on demand as well. Um, as I said, we're prepared to cover the topic of collaboration um, and it's really what it can do for your people and your business. Um, it's going to be a bit of an interactive session, so we'll be hearing lots from Lizzie and Wendy. Um, we'll also be asking a couple of questions to yourselves throughout, so please feel free to get involved and we do want to hear from you too. Um, so without delay, I think it's going to be a great time now to introduce you to our wonderful panellists. Uh, well, I'll introduce you to the wonderful Lizzie Benton first. So Lizzie, please take it away. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for having me today, guys. Um, so I'm Lizzie Benton. I'm a company culture coach and founder of Liberty Mind. And I help businesses create more progressive, participative organisations where our human potential can thrive. Um, I also host Make It Thrive, the company culture podcast. We're currently recording or publishing, should I say, season 10. So if company culture is something that you're really passionate about or currently working through, then I really recommend you go over because I've done lots of different interviews with experts and thought leaders all in the realm of company culture. Um, my background is predominantly in new ways of working and the future of work and self-managed organisations. So looking at more progressive organisations and how we can kind of create more participative, democratic organisations where we have more autonomy, more fulfilment and more wholeness in the workplace. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Great intro. Um, and of course, we've got the lovely Wendy. If you could just intro a little bit about yourself too, that'd be fab. Uh, that's one to follow. Thanks, Lizzie. <laughs> um, hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Wendy Reed. Um, I'm the CEO and founder of HR Revolution. Um, we are an outsourced HR business um, looking at everything people, basically, so people services. So this links really nicely into how we work with our clients, but also how we like to um, try and disrupt things a little bit and kind of get companies so they're really thinking about their people and how they're going to um, grow and develop them within their roles in the business. Um, my background has been um, internal HR, external HR, managing businesses, owning businesses, um, and my passion is all around people um, and my team's passion as well. I was saying we're very much kind of looking at the forever changing landscape of kind of what we're, what we're in at the moment and how we can help people navigate their way through positively so they actually love what they do. Lovely. That's it. Thank you very much, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Um, wonderful. So I think let's get into the swing of things. We've um, got some questions we'd like to ask our panellists today. Um, so Lizzie, if you're happy to kick things off, um, what are the things that are getting in the way of collaboration in the workplace? And what are the key solutions we can help for these problems? Yeah, I feel like the number one challenge that comes up for businesses when it comes to collaboration is time. We are just so restricted by the busyness and the day-to-day -day of things that need to get done. So time is something that people really struggle with when, when, when it comes to collaboration. But what we have to really think about is being more intentional about collaboration and create some better systems for how collaboration can work within our workplaces. So 
you know, traditionally we go towards that classic brainstorm meeting where everyone's like, oh no, I've got to go in with all these ideas. And it feels like we have to go in and press this creativity button, which as we know, just doesn't really happen. Um, And it stifles us. and, And a lot of the time that just doesn't, you know, bring to fruition what we need. So even a basic retrospective as a practice in your organization can really help with this. So, you know, looking at what's working, what's not working, what do we need to do differently? Asking some of those questions rather than, um, you know, sometimes being very um, sort of short in terms of what we're looking at. So, you know, and the other thing I would say as well when it comes to collaboration is a lot of the time we look at things that are in the business, what's going on in the day to day in terms of collaboration, but actually can we take a step back and actually look at the landscape of the company culture and the business and think about okay can we work on the business how are we working together where does collaboration get stuck um so these are things that you know not just leaders should be doing but teams should be participating in as well because the other thing we tend to do when we talk about collaboration is we tend to think that anything idea based has to come from the top and then get fed down but actually what we want to do is co-create as much as possible and create an environment where people can contribute really meaningfully because a lot of the time some of the best ideas are actually in other areas of the business it's just that people don't have the opportunity to participate to voice their ideas there's not that present Um, and we do have a tendency to have this thing called authority bias which is where you know we are always looking to include managers or senior leaders in collaboration meetings rather than looking at actually can we pick and mix some individuals from across the organization to bring together some ideas so I would definitely say you know time is a really big thing so can we get intentional about when and where we spend time on collaboration And also making sure that we really co-create in a collaborative way and not just always going with the same voices and the same people. So they would be kind of my two biggest tips in terms of collaboration, what gets in the way and how we can move that forward. Thank you, Wendy. Um, Sorry, thank you, Lizzie. Uh, Wendy, have you got any input on that too? Do you agree with uh, what Lizzie said? Uh Absolutely. I mean, time is, I know for me in my own business, trying to trying to get people together, which is the one thing I love doing, is, is awkward and hard. And you have to really build it into your calendar and your diary and make sure that actually it, it's a priority. Um, but I think if, if, you know, that filters through, if you then haven't got time or you don't start meetings on time or you're not bothered because it's not not bothered, but you're seen to be not bothered because you just can't make that work then that filters through um, and I think it's top down and, and bottom up as well it's kind of getting the teams to feel that they can they can actually book time in your diary or they can they can move that and kind of take the pressure off of you to be able to handle it and that's all really good and then everyone works well together that's what we like to hear <laughs> um so picking back off of that um when it when it comes to um collaboration um when it's about employee engagement and retention, why do we think collaboration is so important? Why is it the vital ingredient? I The biggest thing for me is people love to be part of something. Um, we're humans. I think it's in our nature that we are, um, you know, we like contact. Obviously, the pandemic threw that all out because then we weren't able to have contact. But I think being part of uh, a team, being part of a um a business model that that you know or a passion that that somebody is kind of brought in on um is really really important and um, it's almost like finding your tribe so i think we've we've seen over the last couple of years that people have really thought about what that looks like um and it's not just about oh, i've got a job or oh, it pays me well or doesn't pay me well but it's in the right area or fits around my childcare or whatever it might be it's about what's important to you um within what you're doing but also within the businesses that you're working with and the people that you work with so Collaboration is is really a key part to seeing how that works and actually kind of bonding people together um, and finding the things in people that you are um, like mindedness. Um, you know, your like mindedness is the way that you you bond with people and kind of where you um, where you have people in your team that you like and want to get on well with and they interest you and then you have that level of respect within within teams. Um, with the remote working, I think. Um, the ingredient kind of got lost because we panicked. I think it was, a uh, we were thrown into the deep end of, oh my goodness, now we're working from home, how do we manage that? I think we all had 
um, you know, death by teams. We all had uh, too many quizzes. We all had whatever it was. But those were the things that we were really trying to see whether we could collaborate and how we could do that in a fun way. And that was kind of the thing that was fun at that time and easier to do because it was online. So I think it's about... Um, Having people, you know, the, the kind of vital parts of that are really having people um, feel like they're part of something, um, whatever that might be, even the tiniest of things, even if you have, I don't know, you have a book club at work or you have walking meetings or you have, um, I don't know, you play tennis or whatever it might be. It doesn't need to be a work thing that they're part of, but it's part of a team that they really enjoy and they can collaborate with. That then leads to good relationships, which then leads to smooth collaboration without, you know, effortlessly almost. Um, I think then also people want to share. Um, we've all got background, we've all got history. Um, I had exactly the same conversation with my team um, or some of, some in my team about um, actually we've got new people in the business. No one knows anyone. No one knows what they do. No one knows what their background is. And some of them have got really interesting, not necessarily work related, but really interesting backgrounds. So it's about kind of finding that bond um, and learning more about people that then gives you that more of an interest you can then pull some of that, you know, like Lizzie was saying, you can then pull some of that skill and that background into what you're doing. And actually, it then it, it it's a smooth run into kind of people helping people, really. Um, they want to have fun. I think it's really important to keep the fun element. And I think as a business owner, as an HR manager, as somebody that's responsible for people, that's really hard because you've got a ton of other stuff that you've got to be doing. And it almost becomes um, a bullet point in your to-do list to make it fun today and that's not that then makes it not fun because you're actually just using it as a bit of a task um, so it's about just finding out what that looks like and it's different it doesn't mean the office has to be laughing and joking all day but it's just finding out what that what that means for your team um, I think um, yeah as a team um, collaboration brings you closer basically so realistically you know if you're working remotely that's really hard um, and I know we're going to go into the hybrid stuff, but um, because you're not with each other and that's that's very easy to grab a coffee, sit around the water cooler, you know, whatever it is, the kitchen, go out, whatever. Um, that's super easy to be able to um, do that. But I think if you um, if you're able to find a way of doing that, which makes it um, easy, nice, uh, allows people to relax about it and not have to be kind of structured, then that's really, really good. And ultimately, I think it boosts morale. So when you've got a team that collaborate, you've got a team that work well together. Um, it's a bit like um, when you were at school, when you weren't picked for the school team or the football team or the netball team or whatever it was, um, you know, they, they used to, well, I don't know if they did with you guys, but with me, they did. They'd, they'd kind of pick one at a time and you'd have like a team leader that would pick their people and you'll kind of be sitting there and wondering if you're going to be part of that team. That's kind of what it's like when you're in work, but just in a grown up world. Um, and it's about being that last person that's picked or not being picked at all um, and not knowing why. And if there's no communication around that, um, because not everyone can be picked and not everyone can be part of everything. But if you understand why, it just makes life a lot easier. And then those that are picked know that they're picked for a reason and they've got a particular skill or a particular interest or whatever that's that's important for that project. So, yes, very, very important ingredient. Thank you, Wendy. I really like your explanations there. It totally makes sense. I think that's something everyone needs to remember as well is, you know, we're working every day. Like, we do want to have fun as well. Yeah. Um, I suppose it rolls quite nicely. It'd be really nice to um, ask everyone who's online today. Um, do you currently feel like your business is collaborating? Um, do you feel like you collaborate enough in the workplace? Um, if you could share your thoughts in the um, chat that we've got, um, and if that's not coming in there, please pop it in the Q&A, but we'd love to hear more from you and, and what you're finding in the workplace at the moment. So I'll give you a couple of minutes just to write some, some different words. I think people might be a bit shy today. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they put a number, I'd be interested on a scale. So if we had a collaboration scale, like zero being we don't collaborate at all and 10 being we're so collaborative, like where, what number would you be on that scale? Like if, if you don't feel comfortable sharing words, maybe it's a, um, a number that can help give us an indication. <laughs> Oh, I can see um, people are kindly adding now yeah. into the chat. That's great. Got a couple of sixes and sevens for numbers. Working on improving it. 
yeah someone said really hard working from home fully remote okay someone's fully remote we're definitely going to get to remote and hybrid working later in this uh, webinar today yeah it's making that time isn't it making that time Yeah, an eight, but communication can sometimes get in the way. Yeah, it can be really hard, can't it, sometimes with communication. Okay, thank you so much, everyone who's um, suggested something. I really appreciate that. Um, what we'll move into nicely now is um, talking to Lizzie more about psychological safety. I've seen this come up quite a lot recently as well. Um, so Lizzie, it would be wonderful to talk a bit more about what psychological safety is. Um, and why trust and transparency are vital when it comes to collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, psychological safety is such a hot topic when it comes to company culture, because I always say that it really is the foundation of culture. If we haven't got psychological safety, then we really can't do any culture where we have to work on that foundation, first of all. And psychological safety is something coined by Amy Edmondson, Dr. Amy Edmondson. Um, and, you know, it's all about basically it's the feeling that if you express an opinion, um, express an idea that you won't be shamed, you won't be criticised for speaking up. And this is vital if we want people to share and collaborate more, because if people don't feel confident and safe enough to share, then we're just not going to get collaboration at all. So if, if people already feel vulnerable saying something, they're just not going to say something. And really, that psychological safety builds trust and helps people to, you know, not just share in a you know aspirational these are my amazing ideas kind of way it's that if we've done something wrong we need to talk about that as a team we need to be able to talk express when we've failed express when we've made mistakes and be able to do that without fear of judgment or criticism or shaming so that psychological safety is something that every company should be working on um, in order for collaboration to really effectively take off and the reason we need to kind of work on that trust and transparency is it's kind of sometimes a bit of a chicken and egg situation when it comes to trust it's kind of like we need to start trusting we need to start being vulnerable ourselves in order to bring that out within other people so it's not something we can just you know do a quick fix overnight I know many of us love a quick fix these days but there's just no such thing when it comes to psychological safety or company culture we need to build that in and transparency is particularly important because we have to have the information we have to have the knowledge in order to collaborate effectively so there's really no point you know calling a meeting saying we're going to talk about this if, if nobody knows the context if nobody knows the information around that um, so transparency is really important. And there are, of course, different levels of transparency that are required in organisations. But being as transparent as possible with people allows them to have the puzzle pieces to know how we can come up with some solutions. So that transparency is really important. So talking about where things are going wrong. I think we do have a tendency to not want to talk about the uncomfortable things within our company cultures. We want everything to be really fun and nice. Um, and I think that's unfortunately where culture for a long time has kind of sat within, you know, um, it's the Silicon Valley Kool-Aid we've all been drinking. We're like, oh, everything has to be slides and fun. Um, the real work comes from the uncomfortable stuff. The real work comes from what's not working, what's getting in our way and how do we move forward with this? So really, I think sometimes we actually have to focus on some of the more uncomfortable areas of our culture if we actually want to be more collaborative and be more innovative. Absolutely, Lizzie. Yeah, I totally agree with that. So being uncomfortable to make everyone comfortable again in the, in the future, isn't it really? Um, and um, please, everyone, um, do remember you can put any questions that you're thinking of in the Q&A box. Um, we'll make sure we have a good Q&A session at the end of this uh, webinar. So please feel free to write anything you're thinking about and hopefully we'll be able to bring some solutions to you. Um, and Wendy, I know we just said uh, now that we're going to touch a bit on hybrid and remote working collaboration. So, you know, in a world where remote and hybrid working really is the norm now, what are the solution to the difficulties that, that we face for collaboration? 
Um, yeah, they are the norm, that's for sure. Um, and I think everyone's different. I think I think that's that's the key thing. There is no right or wrong. It's kind of what works for the business and for the people that are within that business, for sure. Um, there are tons of challenges, and and again, it depends on uh, on kind of your business model. Um, with many, they were already remote, so actually they've either got that nailed down, or they've got you know the way that they work works for them, so it's not a problem, uh, which is great. But I think for most of us, most people have either remained remote working, have some sort of a hybrid model where they're um, in the office or at least meeting on a, a regular basis, but have a remote working um, element that's that's kind of quite key um or there are some that are back to the office and I do think the fact that there's a bit of a mix with everything confuses people even more if we just had one way that we all work then that would be great um just smoother wouldn't necessarily be great because we won't don't fit into that model but um so I think the, the typical challenges are um logistics obviously you know what what comms you've got what connections you've got everyone lives in different places I think we saw lots of um issues over the pandemic period where people were living and working while they're sitting on the bed um, you know, physically having a, a workspace or, a, or even if that is on your bed and you're comfortable doing that and that works, but having an area where you can actually sit that, that's good for your posture, that kind of helps you from a well-being perspective, that means that you, you kind of can separate yourself from being at work and being at home. Um, I think the burnout side of things will be something that potentially comes in at a later date if we're not looking at that because you just don't switch off. Um, and I think we already didn't switch off um, because we were, you know, you've constantly, I mean, just walking around you see you know nobody's actually looking at what's going on they're staring at their phones even if they're walking with somebody um so it's kind of constantly there but I think it's just getting that balance of having a, an ability to switch off but also knowing when you're at work and when you're not at work otherwise you don't ever relax because you're constantly in this state of flux I guess um so connection and having the tools to be able to do that so whether that's laptops at work um you know most people have internet at homes so I would imagine pretty much everybody has but some people don't and uh, you know and if that means you're logging on to you know the free one for the you know the area or whatever it might be if that works if that doesn't work if that's secure enough for the business um I, I just think uh, having all of that structure in place and knowing that right these are the rules around how I work works for people um there's also the it's very easy not to commit and not to show up um you know uh, we have we have many companies that we work with that have now put in place agreements that on kind of how you work and what what kind of an online meeting should look like um you know is it okay to rock up in your dressing gown is it okay to kind of not have your camera on is it okay you know all these things you know and sometimes it's fine you know it doesn't matter whatever it is right for your business and um, that works but it's kind of just letting people know because if they don't if they're not told they, they don't necessarily know even though you may well think of course you know it's 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 um obvious you know it isn't um, and for some people they don't know what they don't know so it's about telling them and giving them rules around kind of what that looks like so that they feel safe as well and that's then having that open conversation around oh okay fine it's okay for me to do that um, or it's not okay for me to do that and I'll change how, how I work um so yeah just so having that you know turning up for meetings um having your camera on and um, that all links in with the collaboration thing you know if you're staring at a screen and I've done it myself I've been in in sessions where I've, I've uh, had a screen of names and um, there's no faces you know you don't know who you're looking at it's absolutely fine it's not a problem but it's kind of like you don't know who you're looking at you can't really collaborate I think we as human beings we connect with um with how people react we connect with kind of you know the, the the facial expressions that we give you know you whether whether you read them right or wrong it doesn't matter but you're connecting with that person so I think the collaborative bit even if you're not feeling great even if you you know haven't put your makeup on for the day or you know you've not done your hair or you're in a place that's not great you know that you can blow your background you can whatever it might be there's ways around doing that but it's it's also that's then having the understanding that it's actually okay we get people in different areas if it's a team meet it's not a problem it's about us being together rather than what you look like where you are and you know that kind of stuff um so so it's just a, a, i think around it being okay to be okay and let them know that that's you know that's that's fine um obviously there are some meetings that you know team meets um client meetings if you know whatever it might be important meetings where you do need to look professional at least from the top up you know we've all learned to sit there in our pajamas from the bottom down um or can't be cozy clothes but as long as you're looking i i am fully dressed today just to say but as long as as long as you're uh, happy to kind of you know that that, that could work then great that's fine um i also think um the hybrid um 
working works well when it's good communication from management down um, and top up so that kind of the feedback on what's working, what's not working, you know, if times of day aren't working, if if um, some people um, have new that they they can't connect online or it doesn't work or it's not it's not effective or it's, it's not um, productive for them, in which case then we can find a way that, you know, works better for them. Um, so it's just about building confidence around communication. I think it's really good for resilience. I think it's really good for general confidence building. Um, I don't know about you, but before the pandemic, I would never go on screen without having a full head of makeup and like make sure I've done my hair. Whereas, you know, we're like, well, you know, rocking up at whatever time of day it is being like, oh yeah, hi, yeah. You know, and now we don't mind. It's like every other day, you know. Um, but so it's about that confidence building that, oh, it's okay. And then it becomes the norm and then it's just what we do. So, but then people joining your team may not understand that or may not have had that in their previous, you know, in their previous work. So it's about um, explaining and kind of putting in the rules around that, I guess. Um, and all of this is communication based. It's just communicating what works, what doesn't work for the individuals, but for the business as well, so that you can kind of see um, how that works as a team, how that works on a one to one basis, and then um, you can market so it fits. Nice. Thank you so much, Wendy. Really insightful. And um, yeah, it's just kind of bringing it back to, to what actual real life is as well. I think um, some people sometimes um, forget that, you know, work, we, we are real people and it is our real life. So really insightful. Um, I think it'd be really nice to uh, open up the Q&A now. So um, please, if you have got any questions, feel free to write them in the Q&A box because um, we'd love to be able to take some time now and to share some more insights and solutions to any challenges uh, that you're currently facing. Um, so uh, one, there's one here for you, uh, Lizzie. Um, some people in my department find it hard to trust one person. Uh, what can we do to change this so we can start collaborating better? Mm, yeah uh well I'm not sure whether you're going to like my answer is probably my answer um so if you don't trust one particular individual we have to understand first of all what is it that they've done that you makes them makes them distrustful should we say is it something that happened and I think then it's about having a relationship conversation with that person and these are difficult to have and it's you know, not coming at it from a blame or a shame point of view, but actually having a conversation and saying, you know, um, I just want to let you know that this is how we feel and this is what's coming up because of X, Y, Z. And, and really actually talking from an adult to adult perspective, having it in the mindset of being adult to adult, not blaming, but trying to understand where, where that situation comes from. You know, all behavior is a symptom of something that's going on under the surface. So why did they do that? It's trying to be understanding. So come from a curiosity perspective rather than a, I, you know, this wasn't right. So if we go from that, that's really important. I think, unfortunately, we have a really bad tendency, and especially in the UK, we hate conflict. We are one of the worst countries for it. I've worked in other countries where they're much more frank with each other, and people are like, oh, they're really direct. It's like, no, they're actually talking about what is present. We have a very bad tendency to go around the issue constantly. So we either like cover up a grenade in candy floss, is what I often say. It's like we try and be really nicey nice about things. It's like, no, I need to be direct with you that this is what's happened. And so I think working with that is really important. Something to perhaps look into is Radical Candor. Um, that is a fantastic book to read um, and it will really help because it makes you think very differently about what we deem as conflict. Um, and I would much rather say it's conflict um, evolution rather than resolution because we don't want to resolve the conflict, we want to move forward from it. So that's where I would say is to maybe have a start with. Thank you, Lizzie. That's really helpful. Hopefully that's uh, answered uh, that question for someone. Um, I can see someone just pop into uh, the chat. Uh, one for you, Wendy. Um, how would you suggest communicating things like you mentioned about not putting your screen on? Do you put it on a forum, meetings, document? Um, how have organisations done this as best way they can to communicate? It's a really good question. Um, and I think um, it depends on how your team is and, and how you communicate currently. Um, there's 
tons of different ways you were doing i i would always um advocate having it in writing somewhere but i wouldn't advocate just putting it down in writing and then emailing it out to everybody and saying please read the above or whatever um so i think it's about talking being open with the team um you know if you have team meetings discussing it with them then if you have um normally it's not everybody most people like to see people they want to be on screen um and every now and again you might have an internet issue or whatever obviously but most people want to be on screen i think if you have key individuals individuals that regularly don't go on screen it's about talking to them personally um, on a one-on-one -on -one, um, just to find out why um, if there's a reason and it's genuine then then that can be something that you, you can work around um, but it's about getting them to understand you know they're raising their profile in the team and they're being part of that team and by just having um, their screen on and smiling or not smiling can kind of really help with um, let, letting people know where they're at with, around discussions and things so I would say definitely communicate personally personally with them, um, whether that be one to one and as a group, um, and then have something in your handbook if you've got one. I hate the word handbook because it's just so boring and they're but but they're really important um, because some people like to read what they're able to do. They like to see what the rules are. So by having it, at least then you can have um, if anyone needs, actually, um, I can send you a template on kind of some of the stuff we've, we've done in the past if that helps. Um, but um, it's just having something in writing that kind of structures that in your tone. So not as a, this is really important and it's a really, you know, it's in your tone so that kind of people can see that it's it's okay, you know, and that it's just being part of the team. Hopefully I've answered that. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> that was really helpful. Lots of yes, please. So that's really great. Um, another really good question, actually, I think it'd be great for um, Lizzie and Wendy to input on is um, someone's put, we are going to open a collaborative space for people to come in. However, quite a few people don't live nearby, i.e. Glasgow and Cardiff, we're in Cambridge. How do you stop them from feeling excluded? We don't believe in presenteeism in the office. Uh, we'll cut the cost to attend a couple of times a month, but we don't have a limitless budget, of course. And um, so we're concerned at how some of the team might feel excluded, which is the opposite of what they want to achieve. Um, so Lizzie, if you could kick that one off, that'd be amazing. Mm. Yeah, fantastic challenge. Um, I would say is discuss it with those teams that are separate, you know, um, have a conversation about what would make them feel more um, included. You know, is there certain rituals or things that could happen that can make them feel more included when people are in the office? Is there, you know, a, a virtual coffee session that you could do, um, you know, like at a certain time, say like, you know, 1135, everyone jumps on for a coffee and they put, you know, put everyone virtual on the screen, something like that. But really, I would have that conversation with that team. And also maybe it's about having a conversation about what type of collaboration happens in that space. Um, for example, one of my clients, they're all completely remote, but every three months they will meet up in person to speak specifically about the culture and about the business and about how things are going. So nothing until then is spoken until they have those very structured sessions as a team to talk collaboratively so that everybody is involved. So it's just making sure that within the sort of day to day of people being in the office, you know, things aren't happening under the surface that people aren't aware of. And you have structured times and sessions where you come together um, in a much more um, team focused way. So that would be my recommendation. Thank you, Lizzie. Um, it would be great to hear your thoughts as well on that one, Wendy. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, again, it's communication, isn't it? It's all around kind of finding out what works for the people that are involved in whatever it is you're doing, whether it be a project, a meeting or whatever, um, and really getting their buy-in. Um, and for those that don't like to travel or, or maybe aren't able to travel, then finding a way that they can still be included. We, I've, I had um, I had that issue actually with, with the, or not issue, it's not an issue, it's a bit challenge um a couple of months ago where we have one person that physically can't tra challenge because she's literally broken her leg so she can't literally can't move um and they ended up sending her i think they decided to do a cake or an afternoon tea type thing and they sent her a cake in the post everyone else had cake together um so she's still as she was online they were together but but it kind of you know it's not it's not a, the perfect solution but at least it kind of kept her in the team and then she still felt she could be part of that discussion without being there um but obviously you, you can't buy cake every day and uh, we all know what's in the news about cake is it good is it not good so maybe cake's not the best thing but whatever it is you know whether it's just that, that I don't know that you know that they're, they're involved it's it's really important but it's just communicating some people genuinely are happy not being involved 
they they still add good content they still work really well but they just they're not they're not fast um you know and if uh, so if you can still incorporate them in, in the way that works for them then great thanks wendy um hopefully that's a uh... Um, help to answer a few queries there on that question. Um, I think we've just got time for one more question. Um, Wendy has one that's come in um, for yourself, um, and Lizzie, feel free to comment after if, if you have anything else to say. Um, but someone said, the company I work for have quite a lot of unnecessary meetings. Um, I feel like this time would be better than collaborating, but I'm not sure where to start when it comes to changing the process. Um, could you help? Um, probably not. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, it, it, meetings are difficult. They're time suckers, aren't they? In most times, I think. Um, I think I can't think who said it, but I think there's there's some uh, there's some saying somewhere around. You know, if you have a standing meeting, so actually, if you're coming to room, the minute you sit down, you waste 15 minutes or something like that because everyone's getting comfortable and all the rest of it. Um, that's all great, and obviously, some meetings are just to collaborate and get people together. So you want people to be comfortable and you want people to enjoy kind of what they're doing. But I think it's um, I think it, again, it's communication. It's making sure you have an agenda. Um, we have a few clients that now don't have. If there's no agenda, there's no meeting. Meeting. Um, and actually it's worked really well um, because it means you have to really think about what that meeting's about and what you're going to get out of it and you're not going to have some people sitting in there not really feeling benefit and others that aren't you can really see what it's about and then only those that need to be at attending need to attend um, but it's about communication I think it's about um, opening up the conversation around do you need a meeting you know is it something that could be a um a team's message or a you know a general an open forum online or something like that um there's lots of other ways around doing it um i think meetings will always be the bane of our lives because some people love them some people don't um i think if you've got structure and you know what the outcome of that meeting should be um even if that meeting is just to meet each other and talk about culture like you know like lizzie was saying you know there's no real um necessarily a strong structure around it but it's just to have the outcome is to find out what works what doesn't work or what the next steps are in how that's going to change um it's really important um i would also say don't be afraid to say no to a meeting i think we will we're all kind of trained that if someone puts a meeting in the calendar you accept it oh okay fine i, I need to be there you know you don't need to if it's not you know or ask the question what, what's it about and why am i needed um and, yeah and it's just kind of challenging around that really I guess there's um there's quite a lot of people crowdsourcing meetings as well now they're kind of putting information online where it's just a question and then you're getting the chat about everything and then they're doing a meeting to discuss the outcomes rather than actually talk about everything um but it is it's kind of what fits your team and kind of how things work for you Yeah, I have a I have a lot to kick off the back of it because I I actually run I run a session with teams to run better meetings and it, because it is the bane of people's lives um, and so much come comes up for me around meetings. So one of them, the reason we have so many meetings is trust based because we don't actually trust that people are doing work. So it's like oh I have to check in with you. Like one company I heard of the other day is doing two meetings a day with a team like that is the most unproductive way to spend time like two meetings a day absolutely ridiculous like if you're having two meetings a day I'm concerned about your business like what is actually getting done um so that's what I would say is actually it's trust-based why are we having this meeting why do you need to be checking in on your team all the time that work is getting done there's way better ways to do that um, I think it's also about in terms of meetings is actually are we having meetings to make decisions that's the other pitfall that we have. So trust-based meetings, basically, are you present? Are you doing work? What a load of rubbish. The second one is decision-making meetings. Again, why are we all here to make a consensus decision? A lot of the time, everybody in that room doesn't need to be making that decision. It could be one individual, but again, we don't trust them to make that decision. So why are we having this meeting? And actually, if if that if a decision is required in a meeting, it should only concern those who are actually impacted by that decision. So, for example, if you're getting a new, I don't know, accounting piece of software, who actually needs to be involved in that meeting? 
probably somebody in finance, probably someone who's going to be paying for that, then those are the only people that need to make the decision on what system is available. So really, it's about understanding why are we having these meetings to begin with and improving the structure of them as well. Um, there are many kind of little hacks that are out there, like, you know, not making them, you know, an hour long by default, you know, every school microsoft to google puts them for an hour which nobody wants to be in a meeting for an hour um so you know by default changing the time limit of your meetings but there's just so many reasons we're having unnecessary meetings and a lot of them is to do with our culture not to do with actual work that's getting done yes and really really uh, valid points there lizzie no go for very it very passionate about passionate. meetings sorry absolutely sorry. <laughs> that's what we're here for <laughs> um actually it's a nice way of um wrapping up i think um today we don't want to take everyone's time up with um too much books i know we've got a couple of minutes left so um we've actually recently um partnered with lizzie and lizzie did mention a couple of things there on something called the people first culture series and um, so we've just worked on edition three with lizzie so it'd be wonderful if you could just talk to everyone a little bit about this as it's a free resource they can all access yeah, absolutely. It's a very um, meaty resource full of lots of practical tips. And um, it's all about recession proofing your culture. So we're looking at culture agility, collaboration, psychological safety. So a lot of the things that we've spoken about today is what we've kind of really addressed. And with some of the data in there that's showing, you know, people aren't able to collaborate as effectively. People don't feel like they're listened to or heard. And there's certainly not enough business agility happening within um, SMEs as well. So um, as well as kind of giving the data, we're also giving as much practical advice, which, you know, I am all about practical advice. Um, so there's lots of takeaways for you to go and play with. So it's not something that's just, you know, a great read. Um, biased I know um, but also it's got things in there that actually you can go right let's go and experiment with doing this activity let's go and experiment with doing this activity and just try something and see what happens um, you know trying something is better than not starting at all is in my opinion thank you so much that was really helpful and um, like I said that's a free resource so if you think that's something you'd like to um, read do pop onto our website onto the resources hub um, and yes, thank you everyone so much for joining today. A massive thank you to Lizzie and Wendy. Um, for anyone who has any questions for them, please reach out to their LinkedIn profiles. I'm sure they'll be um, ready for an influx of messages if need be. Um, and yes, thank you so much for joining.